Southern 7 Health Department and Head Start. Making a difference in your community, one family at a time. Welcome back to the Southern 7 Podcast. I'm Shauna Ryan. Joining me today is Naomi Louie. She is the Senior Program Manager for Chronic and Infectious Disease at the Center for Asian Health Equity, University of Chicago Medicine. That is a mouthful, Naomi. (laughs) But thank you so much for joining us today. Tell us a little bit about what you do and where you are. You're not in Southern Illinois, that's for sure. (laughs) No. Yeah, so I'm located in Chicago. And uh, what I do, I work in a lot of health promotion, health education, and we focus on a lot of different diseases and conditions that impact people in our uh, state. And so I work in things like diabetes and hepatitis B. Very good. And you've been working with us now for the past, I think, three years. I think this is our third Mm -hmm. year. And the reason that we're talking today is because um, the grant that we've had over the last few years to bring hepatitis B awareness and prevention to our region has been renewed. Tell us about the grant, a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So hepatitis B um, is a condition we've been working on, or my team has been working on for a very long time. It impacts a lot of folks, and you might not know it. Um, And so the reason why we have this grant um, is there is funding from the government that gets disseminated out to states, and then we get it from the state to provide education and encourage folks to get screened and vaccinated for hepatitis B. Um, Because it's something that is preventable, Um, We think it's extra important to really get that information out there and get folks to um, do these preventive measures so we can um, really just get rid of hepatitis B altogether. Now, one of the things that I've experienced after going through COVID in our region is it seems like all of these viruses, all these diseases that have been around for a very, very long time are just now making the forefront again. And a lot of that is really not anything new. Hepatitis B is not a new virus, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been around a long time. Long time. A lot of people have already been vaccinated against it and might not realize that they have been, um, but some might not. So that is the purpose of of, of bringing the information to the forefront once again. So we want people to realize that hepatitis B is not new. You've probably heard of it. Um, you've probably been vaccinated against it before, but for those who haven't, that's that's what we are concerned about. So, Naomi, what is hepatitis B or HBV, and who is affected by that? Yeah, great question. So, hepatitis B is a virus that impacts your liver. So there are a lot of viruses out there, but this one specifically will attack your liver. It'll cause liver scarring, and it can get so bad if you don't treat it that it can lead to liver cancer. And um, because it impacts the liver, folks that um, may be doing extra damage to the liver, it can just progress even further. Um, So folks that are more uh, likely to be at risk for hepatitis B particularly uh, include um, folks that um, are uh, born in Asian or African countries in particular because they're so highly um, prevalent in those countries. Um, folks who uh, come from that uh, generational descent as well, because hepatitis B can be passed from mother to child. Um, Also, folks who um, have been incarcerated at some point, maybe at higher risk, folks who previously or actively use injection drugs from um, unclean needles can get hepatitis B, and also men who have sex with men. Um, Those are the most prevalent or highest at risk populations, but of course anybody can get hepatitis B. Um, And so that's why we encourage everybody to be uh, screened and vaccinated. So it's not an airborne virus, it is is a bloodborne, correct? Correct, yeah. Okay, all right, I wanna make sure, (laughs) as we share that out, I wanna make sure people realize that. So it is something that can affect anyone. And like you say, the symptoms of it are not there. It, it's hard to know for sure if you're positive for hepatitis B unless you get tested, unless you've had it for so long that you're starting to see other health problems. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so getting people uh, tested, getting them vaccinated and so on. So basically why get vaccinated? I mean, if it's something we don't really need to worry about, what's the point of, of even getting vaccinated from it? Yeah. Um, so 
really because anybody can get vac uh, or can get impacted by the virus, um, the vaccine is one of the like foolproof ways you can prevent getting it. Um, so the hepatitis B vaccine is one of the most efficacious vaccines out there. It has a 98 to 100 um, percent effic efficacy rate. So that means that if you encounter the hepatitis B virus, there is really minimal way you'll ever get impacted by it. Um, your, your body will be able to fight it off if you've been vaccinated. And so this is a very effective vaccine. And so um, if at any point you encounter the vaccine, whether it's through any of these bloodborne ways, um, your body can fight it off. And that's why this vaccine is so important. We can get rid of hepatitis B um, from the face of the earth if everybody gets vaccinated and we can prevent folks from getting impacted by it. And we can prevent so many more cases mm -hmm. of liver cancer um, if people get vaccinated and prevent hepatitis B. Okay. I, I said early, not worry about it. You know, I don't want people to be overly concerned but if you've not been vaccinated and you don't know if you've been in contact with somebody who was positive, there is a concern there. Now, mm -hmm. generally, most of the time infants are vaccinated in the hospital with at least one or two series. Is that correct? Yeah. So after 1995, there was... Um, uh, a law put in place. So a lot of uh, hospitals started giving a uh, birth dose vaccination. So if you're born after 1996 or so, I would say you've probably gotten at least one dose of the vaccine, as long as you were born in a hospital setting or received your routine vaccination. Um, moms can, of course, deny the vaccination. So it's good to double check to make sure you've actually got it. You can get screened to see if you've been vaccinated for it, and the screening will show if you have the antibodies that'll fight off the hepatitis B. Um, but yeah, so a lot of people have gotten that first dose if you were born after 1995, um, but a lot of our population has not been born after 1995, so a lot of folks may not have gotten that first uh, vaccine. Um, but a lot of these vaccines are actually uh, three doses uh, will complete the whole series, so you need um, all three doses in order to get that 100% efficacy against hepatitis B. So if you're a, a new mom, um, or if you're planning to become pregnant or you are pregnant, should you be talking with your doctor about making sure that you're vaccinated so you don't pass that on? I mean, can you get vaccinated while you're pregnant? Yeah, absolutely. So when you are pregnant um, and you go to your OBGYN to um, get your prenatal care done, um, you should be screened for hepatitis B. Every pregnant woman should get that screening, and a lot of um, OBGYNs will do it at every trimester, so you might get three screenings, um, depending on the physician, um, but you should get screened at least once so you know your status from that, and then um, it's up to you if you'd like to get vaccinated. You can get vaccinated while you're pregnant, and um, that'll help prevent that in the future. Um, you can do it after. You can follow your um, child series, too. When they get the birth dose vaccine, you can get yours to make sure that um, both of you um, get the three doses of the vaccine and get fully protected. So the dose that you would get while you were pregnant, does that protect your infant? Or is, is again, something that your infant would have to start their series on once they are born? I mean, is there any protection in in vitro there? Yeah, I'm not familiar with the data on that, but we do just recommend that everybody get that three dose vaccination. So the child should, should still get the three doses. Okay. Um, and yeah, like I mentioned, um, folks can get that screening done first. So you can get that done with your regular blood work at with your doctor um, and then see if you're immune to it, then great. You don't need to get vaccinated. But if you're not, go ahead and get that vaccination. Okay, very good. Now, we talked about bringing the grant um, and this information into the Southern Seven region. Like we said, this will be our third year of doing that. And the way that we reach out into our communities is through our public health clinics. Uh, we also share information throughout the region in various ways. But do we know how many people are actually affected by hepatitis B or, or, or test positive? Do we know that information? Yeah, so when someone tests positive for hepatitis B, um, we're required to report that to the state. And so the state has some data on it. 
Um, so overall in the entire state of Illinois, um, in 2019, there were 543 identified cases of chronic hepatitis B. So people that have been living with it for some time and 43 cases of acute hepatitis B. So this is a new, um, uh, new case where they just got the hepatitis B. Um, so the numbers might feel a little bit low, like it's, oh, it's 543, it's 43 people with acute. But if you think about hepatitis B and how effective this vaccine is, we can make that number zero. And so I think it's really important to still see that as important and see that we can make a big difference in lowering that number. Exactly. And in the other side of that too, those numbers are also a little low because oftentimes people don't get tested Right. Or don't show those symptoms until later on. So again, it's it's hard to tell for sure. So we can estimate that there are more cases. Um, so it's important to get screened, get vaccinated, and make sure that you're protected moving forward. Very good. Now, as far as, as conversations that that maybe new parents should be having with their doctor about hepatitis B and vaccination. We've already talked about that a little bit. Is there anything mm -hmm. else that parents need to be talking about with their doctors about? about hepatitis B, prevention, vaccination, and so on. Yeah, I think the tricky thing oftentimes um, for young kids is when they get that first birth dose vaccine, you get that at the hospital, um, you get it and you're overseen by your OBGYN, but then your child moves on to have a pediatrician. And so a lot of times that connection there is a little bit off where the pediatrician may not know, oh, like they've got the birth dose, let me get them the second dose after one month and the third dose after six months. Um, and so it's good to have that conversation with your doctor, like, hey, I'd like to make sure that my child is fully vaccinated for hepatitis B. Um, and I know they've gotten this birth dose um, when they were born. Um, and I'd like to make sure they continue and finish off the series. So it's good to just mention to your pediatrician if you're interested in making sure your child is fully vaccinated um, so that they keep it on their radar. So when you go back for checkups with the pediatrician, you have them get their uh, vaccination. Very good. And we want people to know, too, that they can vaccinate here at Southern Southern Health Department if they don't have a pediatrician or they've moved or whatever the case may be. Um, so we can help them with that as well here. Now, what are the treatment options for someone who tests positive for hepatitis B? Yeah, great question. Um, so you can live a perfectly normal life with hepatitis B as long as you get your treatment and you follow your treatment plan. Um, so if you test positive for hepatitis B, don't despair. Um, you may just need to go to the hospital, see your doctor a little bit more routinely, um, but there are really effective medications out there currently that can keep... Um, the, I guess, strength, you could say, of the virus at a, a low level so that it's not impacting your liver, your liver's not getting worse and, and progressing towards liver cancer. And so we've seen folks who are on these medications um, over the past few decades, they've been able to live full lives and, um, and really, um, it's, uh, there is a lot of support out there for folks that have chronic hepatitis B. And if you have hepatitis B as well, that just might mean you need to have an extra conversation with your doctor. If you um, are planning on becoming pregnant and you know you have uh, chronic hep B, then you might just have to have that extra conversation about uh, where you're at, what medications you're taking while you're pregnant, and then um, talk about next steps for when you deliver your baby, how to prevent that hepatitis B from um, transferring to your child. Okay, very good. Now, can hepatitis B go in remission, like with other forms of hepatitis? Um, it looks a little bit different. So there's a type of hepatitis B um, where we say uh, someone is a carrier of hepatitis B. That means the hepatitis B is not really actively impacting their liver. Mm -hmm. But if they were to... Um, you know, have their blood transfer to someone else, if they were to have a child, then that hepatitis B would get transferred to um, the child or the other person. And so that person could end up with hepatitis B. So a lot of folks that are carriers, they just have to pay attention to um, what they're doing, make sure that folks around them know, like family members um, know about their status. And um, but it's definitely a livable condition and you won't have to be on medication quite as much as someone who has chronic hep B. Oh, okay, that's good to know. That, that mm -hmm. is important. Okay, great. Is, is there anything else, Naomi, that, that you want to cover that we've not 
shared today? Yeah, I, you know, I just want to encourage folks like there's a lot of information out there about um, about vaccines nowadays. There's a lot of um, uh, a lot of folks out there that might be hesitant to go and talk to their doctors. And hepatitis B can be a really difficult thing to have a conversation about with your doctor, but um, it doesn't have to be that way. It's um, especially because it's a completely preventable disease. Um, there's a really great vaccine out there, and so I encourage you all really to. Um, have that conversation with your doctors or stop by Southern 7 and get that vaccine um, because it would be amazing to be able to see in our lifetime the eradication of hepatitis B. Exactly. And we want people to realize too that this is not a new vaccine. Um, this is a vaccine that has been around for many years and we want to make sure people understand that it's effective, it's, it's trusted, and, and it does work. So again, Naomi, thank you very much for joining with me and thank you. I, I tell you what, I appreciate the partnership that Southern 7 has with um, the center and all it does. You guys keep us going on a lot of different levels with the programs here. And so we're so happy to be able to partner with you with this one as well. Thank you so much for, for your support on it. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, Shauna. Great. Thank you. All right, folks. So that's going to wrap up this edition of the Southern 7 Podcast. Thank you for joining us. If you'd like more information about hepatitis B, you can give us a call at 618-634-2297. That's 634-2297. You can also visit us online at southern7.org. And also, don't forget, download the Southern 7 app, and that will keep you connected to all things Southern 7, including our social sites. So you want to make sure you check that out. If you'd like to share today's podcast with others, we do encourage you to do so and you can also view this podcast on our youtube channel so make sure you check that out all right thanks again everybody from all of us here at southern seven thank you for joining us we hope you'll be with us again soon